it's for the public good, which of course people didn't believe at the time. We've had other technologies uh, thrown at us that uh, uh, you know, are for the public good, but for the private bad. Um, the problem is that lots of innovation is, you know, it, it sounds good at first and people get really carried away, especially scientists, you know, we can blow up uh, a bomb that is whatever, you know, as, as powerful as all the light bulbs in the world together or whatever they said at the time. They didn't quite realize, you know, what the end result was. And we still don't know where to put the stuff when it's, when it's done, when it's burnt. So a lot of innovation happens at the expense of uh, maybe the future or, or people. Um, I'm not being, I'm not being uh, against innovation here. I'm just saying that we have to always look at the various angles of innovation. We've had it mentioned already that business needs innovation. And you'd be surprised how many innovations there are. You know, did you know you could buy a container to keep your bananas from being squashed? Now, that's real innovation. For somebody, I mean, for me, they're, apart from the fact that they all look like condoms, but uh, um, that may be my dirty mind. But there's, I found half a dozen companies that sell a banana container, which until a few days ago, I had no idea that even the market existed. But so that's, you know, I know you and, you, know, you and I probably agree that this is not going to advance mankind significantly. But then again, for these people, they make a market out of it. You know, somebody is busy making, in China, making the molds. Somebody in America is doing the branding for it. Uh, so somebody's making a living out of innovation that, that may be totally stupid for all of us uh, in this room, but it's still an innovation. So innovation doesn't always have to be, you know, earth-shattering, uh, advancing mankind. It may just simply be advancing some little poxy company somewhere. Um, as long as there are school books, then the need for banana bunker. Yeah, no, I, I'm sure there is a need. You know, I happen to not actually like bananas, so I'm not the target audience. But I, totally, I just think it's sweet that, that people would actually, uh, you know, probably use brainstorming techniques and whatever to come up with this product in the first place. And the different sizes. To size probably even create, yeah, yeah and then, uh, yeah. Different well, size well we have, we have uh, European rules on uh, how, how, to, how uh, bent bananas are, so that's, oh, I'm sure, uh, one of the, that's why we make those standards, so they fit in the containers, obviously. The same will happen for potatoes and tomatoes very soon. I mean, the, the square tomato, as we know, is not far away. Um, but innovation also has to be uh, appropriate to the technology applied. I mean, an example from my native Berlin, this is, I know it's 20 years ago, but obviously there was a, an issue there, this is the U-Bahn, the metro in Berlin, uh, an issue with technology uh, there, in this case, adhesive technology. The letters dropped off. Uh, and they called this information, uh, which of course basically meant that people stayed outside and, and drove their cars, you know, because you don't want to be treated like this. It's a little similar to actually using Belgian railways this morning. <clears throat> Not entirely um, pleasant. I couldn't pay. I saw I, I, I took the train without paying because I couldn't pay my three euros anywhere. The machines were broken, the lines were too full, it was ridiculous. Anyway, so what, what, they, what we're basically looking at is, is this needs innovation simply because it ain't working. So the innovation has, in this case, um, a case for, for the end user to serve them better uh, and to give them technology that is appropriate to the, to the actual end user. So we tend to forget the end user more often than not. And we've heard this from everybody, you know, everybody can be an innovator. I mean, children can. I'm one of those children, by the way, or was the children. I could, I could draw really well, and I still can. And I was too lazy for math. And now I write my own code. Because I'm, I'm obviously also a good coder, but it's much easier drawing. I got away with it at school because, you know, you don't have to do any homework. And uh, I did drawings instead always. Um, so everybody can be a, a, an innovator, which, you know, there are professional innovators. But essentially, uh, you know, innovators can be accountant, baker. In England, you say candlestick maker. They don't exist anymore. I'm not sure about uh, these people, though, because, um, <laughs> um, you know, um, <laughs> there, there, there are areas in the world where innovation has become a little bit of, a, of an issue. Um, to innovate, to invent new financial products that they themselves didn't understand. And I certainly have no idea what a hedge fund Well, I kind of know what a hedge fund is. Um, you know, it's not a dirty word. It's, you know, basically, you're, 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 you're betting on people's misfortune, which people that... Uh, at races and things have always done. You can also bet on the loser, not just the winner. Uh, but all those financial inventions, innovations, as they call them themselves, of course, as we know, have, have caused a lot of damage simply because there wasn't anybody there checking on those people. So innovation in, you know, in the wrong hands and on its own can also be a dangerous thing. So that's why I'm, 
I'm glad in a way that, that institutions like the European community uh, looks after innovation because we know that there's enough people here to uh, make sure that this doesn't happen in the wrong hands. The trouble with innovation is um, that there are certain people who are professionals. You know, uh, if, you, if you asked around a couple of years ago, uh, the, 